E360 TV proudly presents messages of inspirational stories. Live streaming now to millions of devices including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. With your host, Donna Guinwa, producer and host. Jim Grant, producer and host along with Michaela Vidal, administrator and host, and Gaia Guinwa Balcone Weda, editor in chief. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Sometimes you just have these things that pop up. 30, about 35 seconds before we were going to go live, I mean, just 35 seconds ago, my internet went down and I had to switch and hopefully it will stay back up. So imagine that you're getting ready to go on live TV, this live broadcast and, you know, your screen just goes blank. You're not the, not the, uh, the, the screen, but I mean, you know, the, uh, the camera, the, the, the studio went blank. And I thought, that's not good. <laughs> but we're so glad that you've joined in today. We're going to have a great show. We're, we've got some technical difficulties, I know. And I know that Emerson's trying to get in. And I know that uh, Monique Mama Mo Kislowski is trying to get in. And so we're just going to go right on with the show because that's what you do with the live broadcast. But first of all, again, let me say here on Wednesdays, this is all about youth making a difference. And in this program on Wednesdays in our new fall schedule, what we're covering is stories about young entrepreneurs, people who created a product, young, young people who created a product, or they saw a cause, or they saw the need to create a nonprofit. Also, and this is where Monique fits in real good today. The fact of it is, is that young people, kids and teenagers, they need mentors. In fact, uh, <clears throat> we have several organizations that's wanting to work with us on that. Uh, the Boy Scouts of America, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, even the Rotary Club. So we've got a lot of people who are interested in that. We want to get some of the young people they know that's you know, really made a difference in other people's lives and in their little world, because it's so important for us to be able to de develop our youth, because right now our youth is very, very anemic for good, positive type of leadership, because these are the future leaders of tomorrow, and we need to invest in them. And I really like the Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization, their attitude about how you invest in a child. And they said it right. Now, on Mondays, we've got a couple of people that's going to be with us uh, over the next couple of Mondays. Uh, the, it's all about making a difference in business. This is aimed right at the entrepreneurs. This is going to be uh, information uh, in regards to them being able to share information uh, about the world of entrepreneurship. And I see Emerson still trying to connect his device. I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing with him because I know how he feels and I know exactly how I felt when it happened to me. But, you know, entrepreneurs, it's very, very important because being a, a home-based business, uh, who do you turn to? How do you build a relationship with key people who can help you, you know, go and grow? That's that's the bottom line, because you're not doing it for the experience. And then on Tuesdays, we've got some great people lined up that's very excited about. And the topic is finding health naturally. These folks come from uh, the, the world of natural cures. They come from the world of, you know, having uh, knowledge on um, nat natural And I don't know if my, <laughs> you, 
I don't know if I went blank or not. All of a sudden, my picture here on the screen just went black, so I don't know. But anyway, let me see if I can get Emerson in here. Hey, Emerson, how you doing? Hey, Jim. Right before I went live, I went totally black on the on the camera screen, and I. Had you just went black again. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, but uh, it looks like we just lost Jim instead of me. So uh, I presume that Jim is going to join us again, and uh, I know that he has an awful lot of great information that he's going to be sharing about our guest, who's known as Mama Mo. Uh, I am watching the clock count down. One of the things that we're going to be talking about today is is youth and leadership and and uh, inspiring young people to be leaders and they can be leaders in their classrooms. They can be leaders with their friends. There he is. Uh, did, did I, I, just I just kept got... talking, Jim. <laughs> I just folks, kept on talking. Folks, you can't script this. So when things, you know, when, the, when you go down the road and everything is smooth, you're fine. You go into the curve and a wheel comes off, you know, that happens. So don't let it rattle your birdcage. And it always happens right after the 12,000 mile warranty kicks in, <laughs> kicks out. Kicks out. Yeah, right. As, as soon as your warranty's out, you know. And of course, uh, I was talking about the different programs we have. Thursday is Pets We Love. Oh, my goodness. We're looking for it. In fact, Monique was on last week on Pets We Love. Her and her husband, Matt, they raised the uh, red pit bull terriers. And Emerson, I think you saw where her dog was in a movie with, was it Brad Pitt? That uh, What's the guy's name? Quentin uh, Well, it would make sense if it was Brad Pitt since they were pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, you're, you're sharp today, brother. You are definitely sharp today. <laughs> and uh, she's going to be with us uh, as soon as she can get in. So she's having, we're all having trouble here. I guess we didn't put enough quarters in this thing. Fridays is women and leadership. And oh my goodness, we had Deb Lewis on uh, last week, I think it was. She's a great friend of ours. She's a former state commander for the VFW for the state of Hawaii and tremendous lady. And she sent us her schedule and I don't know when she eats or when she sleeps. You know what I mean, Emerson? She was busy. We're, mm -hmm. She went to the national convention for the VFW and turned right around and went to the American Legion convention. Mm -hmm. And she had a whole bunch of other meetings that she did in between there, including with, um, uh, with, uh, w with some work that she does with young people. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yeah. Plus the fact she fit into her busy schedule going down to Florida, you know, this is before the hurricane and visiting with her mom and dad. So she right. is, she is one, one busy, busy young lady. And the reason we mention all these different programs to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that you may be a good fit for one of our programs. Oh, if, yeah. you, if you are, please email us here at the TV station, inspiration at e360tv.com. Our staff will get it, and we will be more than happy to talk with you, share information with you, and uh, find out, you know, which, which show you'd be a good fit for and all that, because we're all about providing uh, really the TV shows a vehicle for the average person just like us to have a voice. Would you would you say it's that's about accurate, Emerson? Yeah. And the uh, the shows, the, the themes that we've picked out are themes that have um, that have had the greatest response up to mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. uh, among among viewers. Oh, yeah. So, you know, continuing continuing that trend, if there's a viewer, I think it would be spectacular to have oh. a viewer uh, uh, on the uh, in health and wellness, or have a viewer you know wants to add their viewpoint uh, with, uh, with with dogs and pets, or has has uh, some ideas on leadership. Am I back yet? If you're a leader uh, in your community, mm -hmm. you know those are all things that matter. Or oh yeah, any of the any of the different any of the different themes are designed mm -hmm. not just to be talking heads, but to make it something that's yours. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, because <clears throat> when it comes to being a mentor, I've got to roll back a little bit into my life. When I was a kid in school, I was a member of the Cub Scouts. And the thing that really impressed me about them, uh, they treated me just like I was family. There was, you know, obviously mature leadership there, guidance, you know, and they take us out camping and fishing. We had a, it was a wonderful experience for me. And I wish I'd have been, been able to stay into the scouts, but we, we, we sold the farm and we moved and I just never, you know, I didn't find a new pack for some reason. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed that. And I remember also, Emerson, you probably part of this, knowing your background. I remember going to the, uh, the camps that the churches would put on. And oh, my goodness gracious, if you, if you got kids out there and you'd like them to get into a, how can I say this? A nicer environment is an accurate way of putting it to mix and mingle with other kids that are maybe not as, how can I say this without getting in trouble? <laughs> as my, in trouble Jim. As my dad used to say, your only problem is you're running around knuckleheads. <laughs> I, I thought and you I, were going to use that saying of his of just exactly when did you think that was a good idea? <laughs> yep. Yep. I've heard that one too. Yeah. That's a good one of his. Yeah. That's a classic. But I remember I complained. I did not want to go. But when I got there and all the other kids, it was a few kids like me, you know, what are we doing here? You know, but by the second day, hey, this is fun. It was a wonderful experience for me. And I went to several. I mean, after that, they didn't have to talk me into going. I was <clears throat> I was ready to go. And Emerson, I know that in your in your work in your lifetime, you've probably you probably went on some of those, and you definitely oh, gosh, maybe, yeah. yeah, you participate. Share a little bit yeah. about that if you would. Yeah, I was uh, I was real involved uh, in the Methodist Church. They have the uh, mm -hmm. UMYF, the uh, Methodist Youth Fellowship, right, and I was right. the uh, I don't know what they called it. I don't think they called it president one, one year, but anyway, one of the things that we did was we joined with several other groups and created a, uh, a day camp for underprivileged mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. And I was the, I was the treasurer one year and I was the president another year. And the year <laughs> I was president, we had 450 kids. Wow. At risk kids, kids who had never been outside the city and we mm. took them camping. And that was, mm. that was a real, that was a real treat. We went to, uh, this, uh, this lake, this lakefront that, um, uh, um, the, the, uh, I guess the Methodist church owned, uh, for all of the different, uh, groups to be able to take advantage of, but we took them, we took them out and they got to camp and sleep outside and go swimming. And it was just, it was a real treat. And we taught them, we did archery with them. We did all sorts of things with them. So that was a, that was a treat. It was a treat, both being in the youth groups and, uh, and even even up uh, uh, even up into high school, uh, with uh, with our youth group, I was part of a music uh, workshop that was a week long. That was uh, it was it was it was exciting. It was fun. It was everything you said, Jim. It was fun. Now, it wasn't just boys. Yeah, I'm on the phone, Moni. <laughs> and that that part was was also fun. So. That was, I, and, and I, I made several friends that I stayed in communication with all the way through college uh, and wrote to them and they wrote to me and we talked on the phone. So any of those kinds of activities are things that, uh, that make a difference. And it may be, uh, it may be a, a, a church or temple group. Uh, shoot, when I, when, I was, when I was really little, down in your Cub Scout kind of uh, age range. I wasn't a member of the Cub Scouts. I was a member of uh, Indian Guides. And Indian Guides was another group. Mm. And, I've never uh, heard of them. Yeah, I, I hate were, to say it. I've never heard of it. Share a little bit about Indian Guides, please. Well, Indian Guides, was it was another group. And, and uh, it was a group that, that uh, it, interesting aspect to it. <clears throat> 
um, you're, you had a parent that was involved with you in the group. And so my dad was involved with me and he and I got to uh, go to the meetings together and, and had a little, you know, you know, uh, he was, uh, uh, let's see, he was, he was big bow and I was little arrow, I think was the name that we were given. And, uh, you know, so he and I got to spend great time together. And, and I believe if I remember where, where I was at the Indian guides was through the Y, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the town that we ran at the time, mm. but we did a lot of different things. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. I still have, I still have some of the, some of the crafts that we made. Wow. And, uh, I, and I well remember one time, one time we had uh, somebody with a private plane, might've been one of the other parents. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he took us, he took us up mm -hmm. for uh, three of us at a time. Wow. Right? So I got to sit, I got to sit in the, in the co-pilot seat. And so he Ooh. said, well, once we take off, if you want to, you can try your hand at it. So sure enough, we got about 50 or 60 feet off the ground. I went, Oh yeah, what you do when you're six, seven, eight years old? Whoa, like this, and the plane just about hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, so, you, he a, forgot. To, he forgot time. to tell you when, huh? Or how far, or how little? <laughs> you know, we, had, we, you. Had, we had a good time. Oh yeah, and you know, um, after my very positive experience with the Cub Scouts, and. Me and my friend, uh, next door neighbor, Bob Green, Bob and I, we were about 13, I guess, something like that. We became members of the Civil Air Patrol. Oh, I was in the CAP. Oh, okay. I didn't okay. know that. How about that? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? And I don't know what it is, but you put a little kid like in a Cub Scout uniform or a young teenager in a, we had the... Uh, the Civil Air Patrol uniform, the khakis. And, you know, we walked down, we'd, we'd walk downtown and we were, oh, we, we were, yeah. we, we were hot stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. But here again, uh, you know, we got to fly in the airplane and stuff and do different right. things. And it was a wonderful experience. I mean, the first time I've ever been in an airplane, a little two-seater. And it only had to go about thirty-five mile an hour to lift off the <laughs> the runway. Was it was it open an open cockpit? Cockpit. Yeah, what we had there. Uh, yeah, there was I, a, I got to fly in an open cockpit uh, as well. No, no, so it, for, no, it was not the open cockpit. Okay. Excuse me. It it was closed, but it had a little window, uh, you know, a little window here on the side. You opened it up, and it actually hung with a latch hmm. on the on the wing. <laughs> Wow. And I'm sitting back here and he takes off. And I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I've never been in an airplane before in my life. I'm only about 13. And he takes off and I'm scooting down this thing because I'm, I'm a little bitty kid. OK, in the fourth grade, I was four foot nothing. I think I weighed 49 pounds and I'm accurate on the 49 pounds. I was very small as a kid. And uh <laughs> that thing went up in the air and I got kind of kind of scared and I scooted down. And the problem was that stick was coming back and I had to scoot back up, <laughs> you know, but before, uh, before, you, before you bring her in, I want to I, I want to I just want to encourage everybody, uh -huh. no matter what age your kids are, if you're able to take off time and be with mm. them on a, just a field trip with their school, oh, it's an yeah. experience that will will stay with them forever. I was fortunate often be the only dad who was mm -hmm. able to be with my three daughters as they went through school on field trips. Yeah. And, uh, and they still remember it. They still mm -hmm. remember it. <clears throat> yeah. And, and the, the, the sharing the experience and the lessons that, that, uh, that you, that they can learn with you. Mm -hmm. Priceless. Oh priceless. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we, have, and, we have a guest in the waiting area. In the oh green yeah. I, I, I got to tell one story before I bring her on board. Oh, okay. I know she'll get a kick out of this. When you do, as an adult, go out and you're going to uh, be a positive influence, be a positive influence. Oh, yeah. We, uh, me and a butt friend of mine, we're both in the Signal Corps, you know, in the Army. And uh, he had a bunch of junk around his house. And I saw this TA-312. That's the old crank fill phone. 
And so we're going out, you know, help these kids with fishing and all that. So <laughs> this is how smart I am. I, I could still be peeling potatoes up the penitentiary for supper time over this shenanigan. <laughs> but I told him, hey, I'm going to show him how to catch some fish. So I put the two wires in the water and crank that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If the and the guy came over there and he got all mad. What are you doing? Get out of here. with <laughs> My stay there was very, very short for some I, reason. I think, there was, I don't I think know there was something like that in the film. I, I think the film was Brubaker. There was a scene yeah. about like that. Oh, oh yeah. it wasn't fish. Let's not be oh, rude yeah. with our guests. Though, yes, too. yes. We got to bring let's, this young lady on. Let's bring her in. Yeah, there you go. How are hello, you doing hello. today? Your, your, oh. your mic is muted. You got to put a quarter in that thing. No, I, I see your mute sign there. Oh. There you go. There, you are. there we go. There you go. <laughs> hello, everybody. How are you today? Hello, hello, um, hello. Yeah. Hello. You know Emerson? I don't think you met Emerson. I do not. I have not had the privilege of meeting oh. Emerson. How are you, Emerson? How are you I'm, doing I'm today? I'm doing excellent, but I'm sure yes. I'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can only get better from here. Yeah, that's right. Em Emerson works with us here. He's our director of marketing and he's just an all around, just a blue chip kind of a guy. We've known each other for many years, several years, and uh, we're just honored to have him here. And I, this today, if you notice on your Facebook, I listened to what your Mo moments and I put in there for Donna and Emerson and I made a comment in there. We are so honored to have this young lady on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. You know, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and sharing mm -hmm. my story and my life lessons and, and trying mm -hmm. to inspire others to step out of their comfort zone as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, today, I know that you're talking about youth making a difference, and that's mm -hmm. very important to me, mm -hmm. you know, because I grew up in trauma. And I am a product of the foster care system. I happen to be, you know, very blessed. And the impact that we can make in children's lives if we open up mm. our eyes and, and, and are willing to step outside of ourselves and, and to see the reality of what really goes on behind closed doors. Because I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of youth that fall through the cracks, um, yeah. youth that have lived in trauma that grow up in trauma and then get labeled and bullied because of mm. things that are out of their control. And there's yeah. a lot, I know I slipped through the cracks. I was quiet. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was rebellious. Don't get it wrong. I was rebellious because I didn't know any better than to be rebellious. And I think that, you know, and then you get that label. And so, you know, to me, making a difference in the youth, you know, my ultimate goal is to be at a point in my life where I can create a transitional living program mm -hmm. for kids that age out of the foster care system. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you turn a, an age and it's a magic number and all of a sudden you no longer have access to the things that you had access to bo before that brought you safety and comfort, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. being of the state and we're just kind of thrown mm -hmm. out into this world onto our own with no direction and mm -hmm. I made a lot of bad mistakes I made oh, a yeah. lot of bad mistakes because I didn't have that direction in my life mm -hmm. and so I want to come alongside those and you know those kids that that get lost in that system you know there's there's I think it's like 90 something percent of kids that um, mm -hmm. end up in the system end up on drugs wow. end up suicidal mm. end up these statistics. And a lot of times it's due to no fault of their own. They just don't yeah. know how to manage life. They don't know how to manage their emotions. They yeah. don't know how to do life. You know, uh -huh. it's frustrating. And, you know, when you grow up and you don't have, you know, that foundation, mm -hmm. that foundation to help you, you know, grow into be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Um, when you come from <clears throat> trauma, trauma becomes your comfort zone. You know, mm -hmm. so we continue to be as, as crazy as that sounds to some people, you know, they mm -hmm. can't understand why, you know, people do the things that they do, but it's all that they know, oh, you know, yeah. love and yeah. affection foreign mm -hmm. to somebody yeah. who's never had love or affection or they get love and affection and there's something that's tied to it. Yeah. You know, and of... so you wonder why we repeat these trauma patterns in mm -hmm. our lives. Why, you know, I, I married abusive, addictive men. Why? Because they were an image of a father that. That, that I grew up with and I could mm. deal with that. That was what was comfortable to me because I didn't know my worth because I didn't know that there yeah. was something better out there for me. 
And so, you yeah. know, today, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling on, but it's something I'm super passionate about is there's so many kids that get lost in the cracks and get labeled mm -hmm. and oh, misunderstood yeah. because they're thrown into a situation due to no fault of their own. They become yeah. drug addicts. They become prostitutes. They end up in, you know, yeah. in, in the adult industry. There, there's things that, mm. that happen because that's all that they know. They don't know their self-worth. And it's so yeah. important me because if you can reach kids if you can reach the mm -hmm. youth at that age and and make a difference and they can sidestep and realize that there is love that yes. there is a reason and a purpose for them in yeah. this life <clears throat> they're here for a reason that they can mm -hmm. grow that they can get past these things you know then then there's hope mm -hmm. there's yeah. hope if yeah. there was make, hope for make, me there's hope for anybody you make, you <laughs> seriously make a great point. You make a great point. We, we uh, two two things that are that are absolutes. Uh, we only know what we know, and we don't know what we don't know. Absolutely. And so, oh, if you never don't had, remind me of my school days. <laughs> and, and and not to make the connection here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but there's a there, you know the way that we handle people, including kids who come out who end up getting into trouble, but the way that we handle people. In, in, in incarceration is the mm -hmm. same way. We mm -hmm. expect them to, to walk out of the gate. Okay, you did your time. Here's your $20 or whatever they get. And now mm -hmm. go, go, go and do all the things that you yeah. have absolutely no experience and, and, and never had to do. Yeah. yeah. And just and that's why they you figure it out. Mm -hmm. You figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, it's and like, that's not, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm mm -hmm. a big believer in personal responsibility, but the reality mm -hmm. is, again, you yeah. don't know what you don't know, and you only know what you do know. Right. And when we are expecting somebody to make decisions that are the complex life decisions, and they've never had a guide, they've never had a mentor, they've never had anybody that's that's given them any kind of any sense of direction. We're really we're really mm -hmm. putting an awful lot more mm -hmm. on somebody, and yeah. we have to remember in the foster care system. They're there not because of anything that they've done wrong. Right, right, right. They're, we're, they're there because of the adults in their life who did not keep responsibility and honor and all the other things and, yes. and, and be the parent. Yes, yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. And, the, and, and, and now then we're there's expecting the them to do life. something and they don't, they, don't have a, they don't have a framework for it. Go ahead. And and then those kids too. There's a lot of of foster parents. Not all. I have I happen to be blessed. You know, my my foster parents that I had later on in my teenage years absolutely changed my life. You know, they they showed me love and affection when I didn't know love and affection, and I was like, these people are crazy, and they're still a huge part of my life to this day. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I want to start a nonprofit, and I want to name it after my foster parents because if it wasn't for them, and that's why it's so important. If you can reach somebody at that moment in their life when they don't trust, when they don't believe that they have any worth, that they don't know, nobody mm -hmm. cares about them. You know, there, there's something to be said and it's, it, it kind of rips at my heart too. You know, when you're ripped from your home and you carry around everything that you know in a, in a garbage bag, because that's mm -hmm. what you do. You pack up all your clothes, you do everything. And it's not like you get a suitcase and you show up and whatever, and you end up in somebody's random home and you don't know you know, mm -hmm. I've heard stories. I've, I've been through stories and my sister, I've heard horror stories of things that happen in the foster care system because mm -hmm. kids get lost in the traps, the, the, the sexual abuse, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the traumas that these kids go through. So not only do they deal with it in their home and then they're supposed to go into a safe home and it's not safe. And so they wow. learn to put these walls up and they don't, you know, and these are the things that we never yeah. talk about. One of the reasons why, you know, right. I, I thought that I could make a difference being part of the the, the foster or um, social services. And you yeah. realize that there's so many holes in the cracks and we mm -hmm. give so many opportunities to people who don't deserve more opportunities. And the, mm -hmm. the ones who suffer are the kids, are yes. the youth, they're the ones who suffer. Yeah, because um, they feel like, you know, I've been lied to again. They make mm -hmm. it up to Absolutely. some cotton candy story. I'm going to be in a safe home. You call this safe? That's a living hell for them. And I like the Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization in America. They talk about 
how you should invest in a child. And that is so important. And like, if you notice that Mo Monique mentioned, <clears throat> the thing that really turned her life around was the love that she received from the foster parents. And see, love, ladies and gentlemen, that is the anchor of our life. It <coughs> keeps us on course, keeps us at you know, secure in our morals, our values, and our beliefs when the winds of adversity blow. And they do blow. No one's got a wind, you know, a windshield or anything like that to block out the wind. It's going to come. So just take a deep breath and relax. And, and kids have got to know that when things happen, uh, they've got to be able to have that strong anchor where they don't fall apart. They've got to have a secure you know, system, family system people that they can go to in their hour of need that they can talk to. That's so critical because so many kids now, I remember as a teenager, I mean, I really couldn't talk to my parents that much, you know, you know, I could talk to mom in a certain way because mom's mom, you know, she, you know, I could get away with anything with mom, but dad, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> Cause he was, he, he could read, he could read me like, like an open book. I mean, he, <laughs> one look at my face, he knew what I was thinking. So I was, I was, I was done before I even got started. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, it is that way a lot of times mm -hmm. and especially in, in, you know, older generations. I think like I'm mm -hmm. one of those last generations that, you know, I'm in my forties. So I was like the last generation that really grew up in a society where like man was the head of the household and, mm -hmm. you know, women, you know, you know what I mean? Like we didn't have the computers and, you know, we still had cords on our phones and you know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's a different way of life. Now, everything oh, yeah. we, we find our comfort in, in digital, what, you know, we find inspiration on what we can scroll through on our social media and mm -hmm. that social interaction. I think that we are, are mm -hmm. really, I think one of the things disadvantages that the, the youth have today is they don't know how to communicate and they don't know how to have intimate conversations and intimate interactions with each other. And they take things so personal. Everything's about me, 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 me. And they, they don't allow themselves mm -hmm. to be vulnerable or to be loved. They're trying yeah. to live up to this image of the next, you know, social media influencer, the next mm -hmm. whatever it may be, but they can't relate they can't relate. They, they, they want to relate, but they can't relate. And so the, the self image of themselves, you know, they, they, they don't know who they are or what their purpose is in life. And they try mm -hmm. to emanate like everything else that's around oh, them Oh yeah, because they have access to so much more, but what they mm -hmm. don't have access to is love is mm. understanding is communication. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> You know, we're taught, you know, from a young age where sit down, shut up, be seen and not heard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like whether it's school, you know, you listen to your, uh, you know, your, your, your principal, your teachers, your parents, your whatever. And but we don't teach people to communicate. We take mm -hmm. things so personal these days. Like if somebody mm -hmm. has a different opinion and, you know, th these kids are losing out on that intimate interaction and learning mm -hmm. how to communicate and how to deal with struggles and how they're really feeling and how to work mm -hmm. through those emotions and to be able to communicate correctly without being out of anger or selfish or whatever that may look like for them. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is we've learned to become hermits and they learn to shove all that down and yeah. learn how to not express themselves. And mm -hmm. I think it's so important that we we step in and we teach these kids and lead by example on how to communicate, you mm -hmm. know, how to trust. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues in my life is trust. I don't mm. trust the government because they weren't Ooh. there for me. I don't trust the <laughs> because they weren't there mm. for me. I don't trust my elders because those who, you know, the, the elders in my life failed me, you know, so mm. I deal with it. And, and I feel that a lot of the youth these days feel like they, they, they can't trust. They can't trust mm -hmm. what they see on TV. They can't trust oh, the yeah. government. They can't trust adults. You know, mm -hmm. we were in this fast paced world where adults just don't they, they feel that they don't mm -hmm. have time. They don't have time. Yeah. Like you were when I came on, you guys were talking about taking the time to spend with your kids. Oh, we yeah. Lose track of that. We, we, we mm -hmm. want to shove an iPad or an iPhone in front of our kids because we got so much work we got to do each mm -hmm. and every single day. 
You know what I mean? To take that time to be supportive of your kids and the things that mm-hmm. they do, FFA, yeah. you know, 4-H, sports, what it, instruments that they may want to be interested in. You know, mm-hmm. we don't show interest anymore. Oh, yeah. just you're exactly like, you're, right. You don't know anything, shut your mouth, just do what yeah. you're told. And, and we don't involve ourselves and our kids. And then we wonder why they're lost and they're crazy and, you know, yeah. they're being rebellious and you know all of those things because we don't pour into them we're not pouring into our kids and loving them the way that we need to and that goes right on into you know life into adulthood and all that because like emerson you're you you've been in marketing most all just about all your life and you've seen (laughs) you you've told me some nutball stories how the sales department's over here the marketing's over there and they're not related and you know <laughs> I mean, I mean, so it, you know, it just keeps going, doesn't it? You know. Yeah, it's 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 uh, at the end of the day, even with marketing, I I I, uh, I identify it as relationships, building relationships, mm-hmm. long term relationships, of mm-hmm. mutual trust and respect. Yeah. And when we when we get that in uh, when we get that in our head, now a lot of the wackadoodle things that you see, <laughs> you know, in marketing and pitches and ads and things like that go out the window because that's not, that's not what building a relationship is about. And when you start it out that way, it's never going to be what you're, what you're oh, trying yeah. to accomplish. So, you know, yeah. Building so relationships getting... of trust and respect mm-hmm. for yeah. each other and learning to trust and respect each other. Yeah. And, and, and something that I learned, and I'll say this, uh, Jim, I learned this from my wife, is, you know, a lot of times when, you, when you're, you're going through something or have some issue or some disagreement, you know, I don't feel this way. And somebody says, that doesn't make any sense. That, that, you know, why, why would you feel that way? Something that I've learned is that your feelings are your feelings. Mm-hmm. And, and. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with what's right or wrong or what's real or not real. It's what you're feeling, and that's real. Mm-hmm. And when we begin to respect what the other person is feeling, mm-hmm. which unfortunately in, a, in an awful lot of the discourse in the country these days, that, that probably is not the case. Mm-hmm. But when we begin to respect what someone else is feeling, that's bigger than what's right or what's wrong at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And um, now we're looking at the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not looking at something or some act or some, some circumstance. We're looking at the person and we are, and and that's, that's a very, it's, it's, you know, caring for each other and Mm -hmm. and realizing that your feelings matter. They matter to you. And so many times when when, uh, when couples get into disagreements and stuff like that, they're, you know, they're only looking at themselves and their real mission, especially if they get in an argument, uh, they're, they're trying to win their side of the argument. <laughs> I mean, that's the goal. And that, that's a pitiful goal starting out of the gate. But that's exactly what they want to do. They want to prove themselves right. You're wrong. And I won the argument, you know, and, yeah. uh, and it's so irrelevant at the end of the day. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, and, I, and Jim, you know, I've, t- I've shared this before. One of the things that I've learned, because I've done a lot of work in the brain science space and I and figuring out how the brain processes oh, yeah. and everything else. You know, we always talk about, you know, count to 10 or count to three or whatever the number is and breathe. 300. 300. But I learned a long time ago when you haven't, when having that, uh, that, uh, um, shall we say, um, heated discussions which can happen for anybody. I'm the person who will say, I'm going to walk outside mm, and yeah, I'll you would. step and, and it took a while for a hand to, 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 to extend. You, you come back here kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. she knows now I, mm-hmm. I walk outside mm-hmm. and the first thing that I do is I try to come up with the most God awful equation in my head like 4,273,692 times 64.765, something I could never, <laughs> ever, 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 ever do mathematically. It's above my what, pay grade. What happens in the brain is 
all of that math and stuff like that is over in the analytical side. Mm -hmm. The analytical side isn't the place that really matters. It's that intuitive side, the reasoning mm -hmm. side, the caring side. Mm -hmm. And what happens is if, if I'm, if, if all the energy is over here mm -hmm. and I drain it over here, what happens is it brings that whole temperature down mm -hmm. and literally yeah. in the space of less than a minute in some cases yeah i'm clear headed and, enough to say you know the most important person in the world to me is in the other room and mm -hmm. what we're talking about right now a week from now i won't even remember it oh yeah and the next step i'll do is i'll go in yeah and i'll say <clears throat> please forgive me for the way mm -hmm. i reacted yeah mm -hmm. people say well, why are you asking forgiveness if you're not maybe you were right it's like it's not about being <laughs> right yeah. And I can always react in a positive, loving way. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I wasn't reacting in that way, then yeah. or responding in that way, mm -hmm. to ask forgiveness for the way I reacted. Oh, yeah. That doesn't make yeah. anybody right or wrong or indifferent. All it does mm -hmm. is it says, I care. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a good lesson that kids could learn, I too. Was, you know. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Imagine if, we, if 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 we were able to take what you just said and implement that and teach our youth mm -hmm. how to communicate, how to step back, mm -hmm. how to take responsibility for our part in the communication, mm -hmm. our part in you know what? I don't agree with you, but the way I responded is not correct. Right. And mm -hmm. I apologize for my part in that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I reacted oh, yeah. oh, out yeah. of my emotions. You know, yeah. and, and then there's forgiveness that's allowed to be there because there's a state of vulnerability. And imagine mm -hmm. if we could teach our youth how to mm -hmm. do that, how to be like, you know oh, what, yeah. there's something I'm being triggered right now. Let me just take a step back. Let mm -hmm. me refocus. Let me, you know, get my brain back into where a state yeah. that's not <clears throat> erratic, that's not responsive, that's not reactive mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and get control of myself and my emotions. And let me come mm -hmm. back in and be like, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm sorry mm -hmm. that I you know, did this, I'm sorry, you know, for my part in, yeah. in our communication. And then you grow and you come from a place of love and oh, understanding yeah. and forgiveness. You know, imagine mm. what we could do with Ooh. that. What the world oh, forgiveness is powerful. Mm. 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 That. It's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, forgiveness it's is powerful. So and simple. Cool. It's, not, it's not simple yeah. in the moment, but it's, yeah. it's a simple act that if we, if we can really instill that and mm -hmm. to lead by example, that we can change mm, yeah. a lot of lives. We can yeah. save a lot of yeah. marriages, we can, which in turn save, you know, the children, you know, right, because yeah. then they instill that in their children. And then mm -hmm. those children instill that in their other friends. Yeah. And, and and it just ripple, the ripple effect goes out. Yeah. You know? yeah. But it all That's, starts with us. Yes, it certainly does. And, you know, when, when you talk about forgiving someone, forgiveness is based in an agape type of love. And what I mean by that is that when you forgive someone, you know, you're not going to forget it unless you get Alzheimer's or something, but you never, as in never, ever, ever throw it back in their face because that proves to them that, A, you did not forgive them and they're going to know deep down inside, you really don't love them as much as you should from the heart. And that ev that came very evident to me when I went through my experience there. And I thought about <laughs> some of the things I've done in my life. You know, I never did anything to really hurt anybody. I probably hurt myself more than anybody else. Skint my ignorance a few times. But my point being was that all that that was forgiven was nowhere in that in on that realm. It just doesn't exist there because true love forgiveness means it doesn't exist anymore. And that really, you know, it really it's made an impression on me. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, yeah. Isn't it, though? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and when we're talking about forgiveness, what people don't understand is forgiveness doesn't mean that you accept that what the other person did is yeah. okay. Because mm -hmm. you need right. to take that back. You know, mm -hmm. your forgiveness is about you taking control of that and not allowing that, you know, not, how do I say this? It's not about the other person. It's about you. It's about your mm -hmm. own healing journey. Yeah. It's about it's about saying that there is nothing that I could have done and nothing that I can do to change that this happened. 
Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I can't I can't go back and and I, I could spend the rest of my life living in hatred for the people oh. that have abused me throughout oh, my life. Yeah. But I've chosen oh, to yeah. forgive them. And in mm-hmm. that forgiveness, it's so powerful because it doesn't mean that what they did is mm-hmm. right or that mm-hmm. I'm saying that yeah. they were, you know, that they they that that it doesn't hurt anymore. You mm-hmm. know, that those things don't hurt, but I'm not going to allow that to keep me from my purpose and my passion mm-hmm. in my life, that I'm mm-hmm. not going to hold that resentment and that hurt within me because all of that energy, all it does is when we shove it down and we choose not to forgive, it comes out mm-hmm. in other ways, it comes out in our health, yeah. it comes out in our other relationships, it all mm-hmm. comes out in other ways that we wouldn't even ex- expect when we respond in those times of communication that end up mm-hmm. being a trigger response because we haven't chosen oh, to forgive. Yeah. That comes in in, in in our marriages and our relationships with our children. It comes out in yeah. other ways. So we choose to forgive so that we can move on and yeah, become the control. great version of control. ourselves. I can't mm. control how somebody yeah. else has acted or what yeah. they have done. What mm-hmm. I can control is how I choose to react and what, and what I choose to hold on to. In another yeah. another organization that I, that, uh, that I was involved with, one of the things that we we uh, we would say is is I love you and I accept you even though I don't understand you. Now when somebody cuts you off in oh, traffic, what you want to say is I love you and I accept you. You. St- <laughs> <laughs> but, and then it the says is, four thousand six hundred ninety nine trillion times. The thing <laughs> is the power of it of the concept, and it's not the magic of the words, you yeah. know, those particular words, but the concept. And we're talking about forgiveness, which is just just a powerful, powerful concept. The, 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 the power of it is I'm releasing it. I'm not mm-hmm. holding it. The person who whacks me and cuts me off in traffic and is gunning it down the road and, mm-hmm. and, and just about runs me off. You know what? They're not going to even remember it a, a, an hour mm-hmm. from now. Yeah. And I'll be yeah. seething about it all day long. So the power in it is yeah. I'm releasing yeah. that from me. Yes. I'm not, I'm not accepting what they're doing. It's yeah. not right. And they could kill because, somebody, and God hope yeah. you know. I hope that they don't. Yeah. But what I can choose to do is not not is to evict that you know not to give them the space yeah. in my brain to evict them from that from that part of my brain. And the only mm-hmm. way to do that is through forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. And because as they go on down through the pathway of life, they're going to have the same problem, but you will not. Mm-hmm. Unless you carry it, and unless you you know let it grind at you, you know. And I just want to mention very quickly, Monique and I we've met through the being invited to be a to share our stories in this book here, Health. Uh, I see, I never can remember the name of this thing. Your the health, health turn, around turn around story. story. Yeah, don't tell Austin I said that he might rip my <laughs> chapter out. But that's how we met. And when I read her story here, what she shared earlier, the thing that really impressed me about. Uh, Monique, is the fact that just look at her. I mean, just look at her eyes. You see a lady, you see a beautiful young lady <laughs> with, with a beautiful smile, but the, the light in her eyes, that's a true reflection of her soul, the peace, the love that she has. I mean, I, I just I just got to tip my hat to, to you because, you know, growing up the way I did on a farm, the only trouble I got into was, you know, doing something stupid and getting my butt beat. And that was it. <laughs> and I knew it was coming after I did it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I just admire you for what, you know, what you've done and what you want to do. And I, I'd, li- I'd like to just ask one uh, consideration. Let me put it like that. Whenever you uh, start with your nonprofit I would be honored if you'd let me have the opportunity to televise that and uh, put put this on the on the TV and we'll we'll uh, we'll draft Emerson here and bring him along with us. You know, I guess that's it because we love you, Emerson. Bottom of my heart, brother. <laughs> I <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just say tacos and enchiladas to you and yours. You know, I, yeah. I, I, and, and I want to encourage because, you know, I never know who's going to see this and who's going to be inspired right, by right. this. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I, I just want to encourage those adults, not only just teenagers or whatever, that, you know, it's not an easy road to healing. It's not an easy road to forgiveness. It's not, it's a lot of work and you have to go deep down into those dark places that you'd really like to just forget about. But if you don't do that, 
If you mm. don't learn to heal yourself within, it doesn't matter. And that's what my whole chapter is about is if we mm. don't, I can eat correctly. I can exercise. I can do all of these things and, you know, on the outside, mm. but if I don't work on the inside and I don't oh, heal okay. on the inside and, and go to those dark places that most of us don't want to go to, we can't heal. We can't truly, if we can't learn to love ourselves, we can't learn to love other people. If we don't mm. heal those root core issues, we're just going to spew all of that. It's going to come out in in, in, in our relationships and in, in every mm. aspect of our lives. But I want yeah. people to understand that it's not an easy journey. The mm -hmm. smile on my face is not, you know, you guys see this, but you don't see what goes on behind closed doors. I suffer from PTSD. I have mm. moments where I'm uncontrollably shaking and crying because of a trigger, because something that's been triggered. I've had mm. to do deep work in my relationships. I've had two failed marriages. You know, I, I got into abusive relationships and I've had to learn to grow and to take responsibility for my actions and my insecurities and my fears and how they come out in my relationships with my children, with my husband. It's not an easy road, but it can mm -hmm. be done. And it mm -hmm. doesn't get so much better where everything just goes away. Things don't go away. Those traumas mm -hmm. are still there. You know what I mean? It, it just gets easier. And the mm. more that you you share your journey, the more you can inspire yeah. others. And I think that if I can go through the things that I've been through and still find a reason to put a smile on my face, oh, I yeah. know that anybody else can do it. And mm. that's the thing. It's the reason why I stepped out of my comfort zone and I wrote my chapter. It's the reason why I share my story, because I know that mm. there's somebody out there that needs to see that there's somebody like them that ended up having an extraordinary opportunity in their life where the gates just oh. opened. Yeah. Up, you know, to, yeah. to have faith that there is a chance mm -hmm. for them in this world, that there are people yes. that care, you know, and, 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 but I need them. To, I need people to know that it's not an easy journey going mm. inward and self-reflection and, and healing those deep wounds within ourselves. Mm. is not an easy journey, but it's so mm. worth it. Oh, and work yeah. it. And when we get through it, then we reach our hands out and say, I'm here. Let me show you the way. It's mm. not going to be easy, but I can promise you that I can hold your hand along the way and I can be here for a shoulder to cry on in those moments when you feel like you can't go on anymore mm. because I've been there. I've been suicidal. I've been mm. there where I believe nobody else. I've been there where I've been beaten and broken and homeless and living in women's shelters and believed I had nothing to give this world, including my children. Mm. You know, like there's parts in the book where I talk about, I didn't believe that I had any worth in myself and that I was only a burden to anybody who was a part of my life, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I have come out of that, but it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. The smile on my face that you see now is covered by a lot of like hurt and pain. But mm -hmm. if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I want to inspire sure. those people who are in those dark places mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that anything is possible. Just don't give up. Just don't give up. I know, Emerson, you wanted to say something. We're getting a little close on time. We have to shut down at 56 <laughs> minutes. Otherwise, they'll, you know, you'll see a big hook. Well, the, the, the only thing that I was going to, to say, as you were saying, that this, this was triggering this for me. And that is that you know you've had you've had more than one abusive relationship as you as you said, you know, many of the viewers know people that have had multiple serial relationships that just were the wrong people, and you want to hold a mirror up to them and say, here, yeah, fuck. guess what, you know, there's stuff here that's that's it's not your fault, but mm -hmm. to not recognize it means that it's it just becomes a continuing process. And yeah. the other part is, we were talking about forgiveness earlier. Vulnerability mm -hmm. is a part of that too. Mm -hmm. When we say, I'll mm -hmm. never be hurt again. I'll never have this. I'll never, never, you know, we shut ourselves off from the world. Mm. And when we do that, we shut ourselves off for the, from the joy that we can bring to others and that others are looking to bring to us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because we're not going doing that inner work. Oh yeah. And so it's it's being it's it's that willingness, it's that willingness mm -hmm. to be to to be real and to be out there and to be ourselves and and not to carry mm -hmm. all the burden of the pain and all the burden of the uh, abuse 
art for some for of, of, of drugs or other things that, that have oh, weighed yeah. them down and mm -hmm. held them back and being oh, yeah, willing to be open yeah because the universe has some great things for people when you and <laughs> we ain't seen nothing yet yeah, <laughs> but when yeah. you are real and people see mm -hmm. you they are drawn the, yeah. the people you're looking for so most nice. and the, and the oh, love yeah. and the respect the relationships you want yeah. most are looking for you yeah, because I went through that a lot in the 70s after I came back from NAM. I was pretty well burned out, and uh, I chose alcohol as my escape, and I would get off to myself. And my defense was that I was always joking around and things like that. I kept people at a distance because I didn't want to talk to anybody. And then finally, I, uh, you know, through a series of hearing other Vietnam veterans talk, and they talked about it doesn't hurt anymore. It wasn't an act of hatred. It was an act of survival and all that. I came to grips with it. I quit drinking January the 1st, 1981. I never will forgive my mother. She called me one time. She says, uh, well, how did you quit drinking? I said, well, I quit buying. <laughs> you quit buying, they quit surfing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just the way that world turns. But you got to have that courage yes. to say this is wrong. I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm not going to cheat myself out of the true riches of life because look at all the love that I missed out on in the 70s there. And ladies and gentlemen, our time is gone we hope you've enjoyed the show. We've really been blessed to have Emerson and especially Monique with us today. And always remember to love yourself first. You are worthy. You deserve it. And if you love yourself, then you can love others because you, can, you can't give somebody something that you don't own. So own that love and be, you know, remember to forgive yourself too. That's extremely, extremely yeah. important. Yeah. Huge. And it's where we're very easy to forgive others, but to forgive ourselves, you know, work on that. I know I've had to and still do to some degree, but, you know, but just bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys again. Appreciate you, Emerson. Thank you, Monique.